Okay, so this video is for those of you out there that homeschool, and that is excellent. Uh, have the greatest respect for homeschooling and homeschoolers. But uh, we want to take a look at this question here, and that is your child is struggling in math. What do you do, especially if you're a homeschooler? Of course, uh, this could be um, any situation whether you're homeschool or not. But uh, what I'm going to be talking about here pertains to homeschoolers. So uh, if your child is struggling in math, you're definitely going to want to stick around for a couple minutes because I'm going to give you some good suggestions on how to correct that uh, situation. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. So the advice I'm going to give you here is, you know, for lack of a better word, professional expert experienced advice, okay? So stuff that you can kind of trust. But uh, over those years, I've constructed uh, full homeschool math courses for um, pre-algebra, algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and pre-calculus, very comprehensive uh, courses. Matter of fact, uh, at the time of this video, we just won uh, the top courses for middle school and high school math. We were voted number one by one of the largest uh, homeschool magazines out there, Practical Homeschooling uh, Magazine. Very excited about that. So I'm gonna leave uh, links um, in the description of this video to all my uh, homeschool programs if you want to check them out. But uh, without further ado, let's get into this question here and talk about uh, what to do if your child is struggling in mathematics. Okay, so uh, I like to kind of teach or kind of give general advice in this way, kind of using a basic graphical uh, organizer. So the first thing you want to do, and this is no particular order, but I'm going to kind of do it this, this way. The first thing you want to kind of check is the program that you're using. Okay, what program are you using? Are you using a textbook program? Are you using a video-based program? Does your child like the program? Do you feel like the program is maybe not rigorous enough? So you want to kind of, you know, ask yourself, hey, maybe I didn't choose the right homeschool program for my child. Uh, that can definitely happen, okay? So uh, the bigger thing here, though, whatever program you're using, my first question to all parents, okay, is this, who is the teacher, okay? Is there a teacher, an actual teacher, uh, that's teaching in this program? Because oftentimes, uh, homeschoolers get wrapped up with uh, programs that are, you know, software-based or a lot of workbooks and worksheets and everything else. They have a lot of materials, you know, they're put together really well, but, you know, again, who is the teacher? Because the number one factor in student success when it comes to mathematics, and by the way, I'm really kind of um, speaking more towards the middle school and high school level mathematics, although this can apply for elementary school as well. But the number one factor, okay, when a, a student is learning mathematics is the teacher. Who is behind these videos? Is there videos? How long are the videos? If the videos are really short, like five minutes or 10 minutes, uh, that's not enough. I can tell you right now, um, uh, especially at the middle school and high school level, those students are in top schools, public schools, private schools. They're getting a tremendous amount of instruction from the teacher. Okay, So if your program is not robust enough or if it has the philosophy of like, here's a couple quick little videos and then, you know, you have to do the work yourself then you're, you know, there's nothing maybe really wrong with your child per se. They're just not getting enough instruction. So you're really going to have to question, um, you know, take a fresh look and evaluate whether in fact your child is, you know, in a good program for them. Okay. Now, if, uh, if you have to change uh, from one program to another, those transitions can happen and you could be uh, successful. But the worst thing that you can do is to keep your child in a program that's not working. So you're going to have to do something. But uh, let's move on and talk about the second thing that you need to start thinking about if your child is struggling in math. And that is where are you getting your advice? Okay. Now, this is a real big concern of mine that I see is that there's a lot of uh, parents getting advice from other parents, okay, about, you know, topics like, you know, high school mathematics and everything else like that. I could tell you right now, to be a, a qualified, certified high school teacher uh, like myself, uh, you know, you have to have a like, degree in math. So I have a degree in math and a master's degree. You go through years of training, educational training. There's a lot to teaching, okay? You, and, uh, you know, you get a lot of experience teaching special needs kids, gifted kids. Um, so, you know, sometimes when I see 
uh, parents listening just to other parents, what's working for their child, that may not work for you. Okay. So, uh, you know, you gotta be careful on where you're getting advice on try to get advice from, you know, expert, you know, and I'll use that, uh, that term kind of loose, uh, you know, but whatever the case is, whether it's math or any other program like this, try to find, you know, qualified math teachers, find someone who's really, really knows this stuff. So just be careful that you don't base all your decisions on, you know, maybe reviews that are out there and whatnot, you know, do the research yourself. Okay. Try and try to, you know, um, you know, read um, uh, anything you can from an actual teacher, an actual math teacher. I know it's kind of difficult, and that's why I do, I'm do. i going to be doing more of these videos. So if you haven't yet uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll uh, subscribe and check out my program. I'm going to be posting a lot, of, a lot of articles because whether you use my program, Tablet Class or not, I want to just help you out. Okay, I want to give you you know, um, professional advice, experienced advice. Okay. So that way you kind of balance that out from just someone's maybe opinion. Okay. Unless you're teaching math every single day and actually taught thousands and thousands of students, you know, uh, again, you know, what works for one, what, you know, like a situation with one parent and their child may not work with with yours. Okay. So just be careful that you're not making decisions on what programs you're selecting and whatnot, just based upon reviews out there. You're going to have to do a lot more research, but that kind of comes with the territory if you decide to homeschool. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next thing. And that is what is your role? Okay. Uh, in your kind of homeschooling day, okay? Do you want to be the teacher? Okay, so a lot of parents out there think that they have to learn the material to actually teach their child math. I can tell you right now, this is definitely not a good um, a role for yourself to be the teacher, okay, for a number of different reasons, especially at the middle school and especially, especially at the high school level. Um, I could tell you a couple of different things. One, uh, this is going to require a tremendous amount of time for you to actually learn the material. So let's say you learn algebra or pre-algebra, whatever the case is, you learn it just because you've learned it and you think you know it, uh, you know, to really have a super command of that, you know, you, it's going to be hard to compete with someone like, let's say myself, who's been teaching this for 20 five plus years, um, you know, have it's a degree in this, you, uh, you know, you're just not going to have that level of experience. So um, for those of you out there who want to be the teacher, I think you can be kind of a tutor, you know, or, or more in a support role. But if you really want to be the teacher, I would shy away from that. Another reason, especially uh, when your child is kind of going into their teenager years, and I'm a parent myself, is typically, and I'm not, I'm not speaking for everybody, but typically your child is a teenager you know, they want to, you know, kind of get away from their parents and they they don't want to listen to you. You know, it's more like, hey, uh, clean up your room, do this or that. And now you're going to be my teacher. You know, sometimes they kind of want, uh, you know, a different interaction, if you will. So it's best to find someone else uh, for your child teacher. But that doesn't mean you, you can't play a critical role in their education, because what I'm going to suggest is that you become, you become like a mentor or a tutor. So if you're interested in learning the material, um, all for that. I think that's a great thing that you can learn the pre-algebra and algebra. That's going to definitely make you more effective. Just don't put yourself in the primary instructional role because I think that's um, it's not going to be good. You're, you're going to miss things. And it doesn't mean that you couldn't eventually become a highly experienced teacher, but you don't have that kind of time. Your child needs great instruction right now. So the role I'm going to suggest is being a mentor, you know, making sure they're doing the right things. And if you um, understand the material, you can kind of, you know, be a study partner with them, you know, a kind of a tutor role. That's a more effective role for you. All right. So now uh, speaking of your role as a parent, this is a huge thing uh, that you need to kind of make sure your child is uh, doing on a daily basis is study habits. Okay. Do they have good study habits? So what does that look like in terms of mathematics? Well, are they ready to go? Are they taking notes? Are they doing all the practice problems? Are they neat? Are they showing all their steps? Are they double checking their work? You know, all these things need to be going on, okay? Now, your role should be, you know, uh, making sure that they are doing the things that, uh, you know, is required to be an excellent math student, okay? So you should look at their notebook. Hey, let me see your notebook. Okay, does it look like, you know, those are extensive notes? Um, you know, use your own judgment. You look at their homework or their practice problems. Are they writing everything out? Are they being sloppy? Are they going quick? So your role, again, you know, you could be that mentor, but you're also going to be that person checking the quality of the work, making sure that they're developing 
and uh, the great, you know, study habits that they need to be successful, not only in math, but in all academic settings. Okay, so this is really, really important. All right, so let's assume you're doing all this thing. Let's say you feel pretty good about the program you're using. You know, you've read a, uh, a lot. You feel like you have good advice, you know, or at least enough. And by the way, too, when it comes to advice, I'm not saying that don't listen to some other parents' experiences about particular uh, curriculum or programs. Definitely, you know, look at everything, but just don't go solely based upon one person's opinion. That's what I mean there. And let's say you, are, you know, are... Um, using that program alongside with your child, you know, and you're making sure that they're doing their study habits and everything else. So let's say after all of that, your child is still, you know, struggling for whatever reason. Well, one of the things you want to be looking at is to see if there's any trends developing. Okay. So what I'm talking about there, notice how your child's learning. Okay. Are they having a tough time focusing? You know, are they are very uh, disorganized the way they write? Are they very sloppy? Okay. Are they uh, uh, spelling words incorrectly all the time? Well, especially at the uh, more elementary level um, years. Okay. And this can also kind of develop in the middle school and even high school years. But at this point, you, it's possible, okay, it's possible that your child could have some sort of learning disorder, okay, uh, and I hate to use that word disorder, but maybe some sort of special extenuating circumstance, something like attention deficit, um, ADHD, dyslexia, something that you may not have been aware about. You know, you have to uh, kind of look for trends, and then, you know, if you feel... Um, you know, concerned about something, you should follow through and get it checked out. Okay. Make sure that, Hey, uh, uh, you know, you know, let's just, you know, um, call, call it what it is. All right. Don't, you don't want to ignore a problem. If you think there's a problem, especially if you're doing all the right things, face the situation and, you know, maybe, um, take your child to get tested for a particular learning disorder. Could they have a learning disorder? Learning disorder? Absolutely. Okay. But here is the great news. Just because they have a particular uh, learning disorder does not mean they cannot be successful in mathematics. I've taught so many students uh, through the years, through the decades, have had all sorts of um, different situations, um, ADHD, Asperger's, um, it, you name it. Okay. If you can, uh, once you know whatever the situation uh, that your child might be uh, dealing with, then what you need to do is to go back to the, uh, the program and kind of modify it. Okay. Look for modifications. You can modify a program, but then you're going to have to go and get more advice, you know, on how to modify particular programs for, um, certain situations, but this is, this kind of comes with the territory. If you're homeschooling, if your child, for example, was in a public school, uh, you know, public schools have uh, what they call child study teams, which are, you know, uh, full dedicated experts that are going to, you know, test your child and give uh, modifications, work with the teacher. So you don't have that support uh, mechanism, if you will, but it doesn't mean that you can't do this stuff on yourself uh, or, you know, on your own, for example. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, it is possible that your your child is struggling in math because there's a, something, you know, um, a learning disorder out there or a learning challenge they might have that they need modified instruction, but they can be successful in math as well. The bottom line is this, uh, for the most part, 99% of you out there, if you have a child that's struggling in math, there is a lot of things you can uh, do to help your child. Okay. And hopefully, you know, this video is giving you some um, information where you're like, you know, I never thought about that. Or maybe you knew a lot of this stuff, it, you know, for more, more, more or less, it's kind of common sense, but I just want to kind of give you my take on this again, whether you use tablet class or not, you know, that's irrelevant. Uh, from my thing is, you know, I'm very, very passionate about uh, teaching mathematics. As a matter of fact, outside of tablet class, if you if you just discovered my YouTube channel, I have over a thousand plus um, <laughs> videos on YouTube. So I just pour, you know, my math instruction out to uh, you know uh, to the YouTube uh, uh, algorithm and let it just kind of go where it's, where it's at. But I'm pretty um, uh, proud to have worked with many, many homeschooling families throughout the years. And, you know, uh, if you're interested in my program and if you have some specific questions about your child situation, go ahead and use our contact form and we'll get back to you um, and, uh, you know, hopefully try to help you out. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschool adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.